This video is sponsored by Reverb LP. Hit the link below if you want to buy a vinyl or two and support the physical format of music and to support this channel. This video is running a little bit late. I should have probably posted this back in the first week of January, but since there's still 11 months to go in 2019, I thought this could be an interesting video nonetheless. So without further ado, here's my top five most anticipated rock albums for 2019. Number one, Tool. It's been around 4,800 days since Tool last released an album. Hopefully it won't come close to 10,000 days until they release a new one. Now, fan jokes aside, this is what Tool means to me. They were basically the first progressive metal band that I got into as a teenager, and my favorite record from them has to be Lateralis. Although I love Anima and 10,000 Days almost as much, I have to say that there's something about the concept, the larger-than-life sound, and the sheer meaningfulness of Lateralis that made me a fan of the band to begin with. It's something that Maynard and his collaborators in his other bands, such as A Perfect Circle and Pucifer, never managed to bring forth on the same level. Every single year, fans have asked themselves if this is gonna be the year where Tool finally would release a new album. The band has released news about the recording process and the idea of a new album coming to fruition here and there throughout the years, always keeping their fans in a state of expectation. But as they never really lived up to that promise, the idea of a new album became more of a meme than anything else. Substantial material for many April Fool's jokes and false alarms. The reason why the anticipation has reached a new peak in 2018 and 19, though, is a result of the band ramping up their posts on social media. They also performed a small amount of instrumental shows last year under the moniker Tool Music Clinic, so a lot of signs hint towards a new album coming out this year. My question is, if they release an album this year, will they be able to live up to the wall of expectations after over a decade of not putting out music? Let me know what you think in the comments. Number 2. Ryan Adams With a musical career of nearly three decades under his belt, Ryan Adams has established himself as a prominent figure in modern rock culture. Most of his fans are quick to sum up Heartbreaker, Gold and Cold Roses among their favorite albums by him. But personally, I was introduced to him very late, back in 2017 actually, when he released his latest album, Prisoner. I loved songs like Anything I Say To You Now and Haunted House. It's an album that honors the classic elements of rock with empowering and melancholic songs. If I was to compare Ryan Adams to any other artist, then it would probably be Bruce Springsteen and The War on Drugs. It's very heartfelt rock that borrows a lot from its original formula. I love what I heard on Prisoner, and I really hope I get even more interested in his music when I hear his new album Big Colors that's set to release in April. Number 3. Pedro the Lion this is most likely the least known release that I've included on this list, but I promise it's a project that deserves a lot more attention than it's currently getting. Pedro the Lion was first founded in 1995 by key member David Basson. After working with a myriad of musicians over the years, the band broke up in 2006, something that led to the beginning of David Basson's solo career. I first heard about Basson in 2017 when he released his latest solo album, Cure. It's a very melancholic album filled with the struggles that Basson was facing at the time. In the lyrics, he shared his most vulnerable sides, things like the fractured relationship he has with his wife, and the far too few moments he gets with his children because of his hectic touring schedule. It was easy for me to get captivated with Basson's music, mainly because his feelings are so close to the surface. And that doesn't only happen on Care, although that's my favorite album by him so far. There's plenty more to discover in his solo discography and in the Pedro the Lion discography. So when I saw that he's gonna release a new album this month, I was thrilled. And it's actually already out, so if you wanna check it out, go ahead and do that. Number four, Tame Impala. Tame Impala is the greatest neo-psychedelic rock band of the 2010s, end of story. 
No, I'm just kidding. There's more to them than that, all right? Mainly the creative effort of Kevin Parker, the project also contains the members of Pond when doing live shows. And as a little side note, Pond is also expected to release a new album this year, so this is getting really exciting, guys. Kevin Parker has worked on the project since 2007 and has over the years released three albums, Inner Speaker, Lonerism and Currents. All these albums have achieved tons of positive acclaim from music press all around the world and Kevin has just under a decade established himself as a substantial force within music production and creation. Because of his reputation, he's worked with Lady Gaga, Mark Ronson, and many other big names in the music industry, which is great. I think it's gonna be amazing to see what an artist with a background in psychedelic rock and pop could bring to the table in other people's work. It's really exciting. Now, Lonerism has to be my personal favorite by him. It came out in 2012, and I happened to catch that release immediately when it came out. And I was blown away, to say the least. Much of the sound and inventiveness reminded me a lot of the Beatles, but it was still so fresh and new at the same time. I really dig Inner Speaker and Currents as well, so another Tame Impala record this year is gonna be phenomenal. It's exciting to see where he'll go genre-wise as well. If he leans into the synth pop area like he did with Currents, if he goes back into his psychedelic rock roots, or if he tries out something new. Number five, Mac DeMarco. Just a few days before I was writing this, it was announced that Mac is gonna release a new album this year. This is apparently the first album he'll release through his own record label, simply named Mac's record label. Mac is known for creating indie rock, jangle pop, and lo-fi music for the typical 90s, 2000s, slacker, and indie kids. Although he's sometimes been referred to as a dad rock persona in other settings. But it doesn't really matter what you say about him, his style, or his fan base. I personally really dig the down-to-earth and simplistic songs he comes up with. Most of his subject matter has been very light-hearted and goofy for the most part. Ode to Viceroy, for example, was his song where he confessed his love for a cigarette brand. So yeah, as you can see, his lyrics really weren't that serious. But with the release of This Old Dog in 2017, we saw him take on a deeper and darker theme. He wrote substantially more about the troubled relationship he had with his father, something that seemed to resonate with many of his fans as well. He's also said in interviews that he's starting to become more comfortable writing about more serious topics. So maybe we can expect the most melancholic album from Mac DeMarco in 2019? Who knows? So that's it guys, now let me know in the comments what your top 5 most anticipated rock albums of 2019 is gonna be. I would love to hear and I'll be sure to answer you in the comments as soon as possible, so I'll see you there. Cheers.